Hey everybody, how's it going? John here. Today in this video, we're going to write a hangman game in Java. And what's more, we're going to have a two player version and even a single player version. Single player hangman, how are you gonna make that work? I will show you. And we're going to code it beginning to end the entire thing from scratch right here. Now, before we get started, the full source of this Hangman game is available in a link down below in the description. So go get it. All right, so first, I think we're going to do the hard version of this with one player. So you're thinking, how are we going to do that? How are we going to write a Hangman game for just one player? You need somebody to give you a word, right? Well, we're going to do that with a big, huge file full of English words. Again, down the link down in the description is not my file, but go grab it and use it. It's awesome. So how we're going to make that work is we're just going to find a random word inside that huge file full of words. There's like hundreds of thousands of words in that file. First things first, let's uh, do the file input and we'll just grab all of the words in that file and put it in a big giant list in our program so that we can use it. All right. So to do that, um, you might have done like keyboard input with the scanner class. Well, you can also do um, pretty simple file uh, input with the scanner class. And so let's do that. So we're going to use a new, uh, we're going to create a scanner. We'll call it scanner equals new scanner. Now, instead of you doing uh, like system.in to get keyboard input, like we normally would uh, for keyboard input, uh, we're instead going to do a new file to get uh, this with file input. And the parameter that it takes that this constructor for new file takes is just the uh, location of the file on our computer. So you can just put in the full path. Just realize you might not be able to see that all with my wonderful, beautiful face in the corner. So I moved it down. Yeah, you just paste in the entire path and file name of the dictionary file. So now we're going to organize imports uh, because we're using Suite Eclipse and it does this all for us. And we do the import of Java IO file for the file class and Java util scanner for the scanner class. And you can see it's complaining to us because uh, it's forcing us to handle this like file not found exception. Um, so we can just declare that we throw it, that we throw a file not found exception. We don't care. If, if we can't find the file, there's nothing the program can do anyway. We, so we can't like handle it in any good way. It could just blow up. So that's how we'll handle that. So now we need to prove that we can actually read the uh, words from the file. So let's go ahead and do that here. And uh, so we'll do that here by just doing a while scanner dot has next that's just like while there is another line to still get we want to do a, a sys out and we're going to print out um just what that next line is scanner dot next line so this is just going to loop to the whole file and print out the line uh each time just print out each line of the file uh there it goes <laughs> you can see that there are some friggin weird words in this file so once we get this game working, we're going to have a tough time ahead of us, but that's for later. And also as a side note, if you want to make your own dictionary of words and, you know, exclude all these wacko words that you don't even know what they are, that's fine too. Just make your own word file, separate them out by line, and this exact same program will work. So anyway, we've proved that we can loop through the file and just grab each line of it. That's pretty cool, right? We've already done file input. We're only a couple lines into this program. So now instead of just um, printing all these out to a line, let's actually put it into a list that we can can mess with and do stuff with. So we're just going to say list of we're going to have a list of strings and we're going to call it words and equals new array list. And this little diamond operator just says uh, I want to use string two. You, you could put string in here also, but after Java seven or eight, one of those, it's not necessary anymore. You don't need it equals new array list. So we're just declaring a new array list. And we want Java util list. We're going to organize imports. So, so we've got a new empty list of strings. And what we want to do is loop through every uh, line in this file and just add that string to the list. So we're going to have a big giant list of 100,000 or, or hundreds of thousands of words instead of uh, printing them out. And that just allows us to like work with them in the program more than having to deal with the file. So instead of printing it out, we're going to do a words.add scanner dot next line. So we're just going to add that word to our list. Okay. So now what we want to do. So now in the program, we've got our list of words in uh, a list called words. So what we want the, the program to do next for the single player version uh, is just to pick a random word out of that giant list that the player has to guess. So first in order to do that, we're going to need like a randomizer. So in Java, that is done with the random class, not just any class. The random class, not some random class, the random class. So we're going to call it random rand equals new random. Whoops. All right. 
And then we'll go ahead and organize imports again. And we can see we get Java util random. We're starting to build a nice little list of uh, imports. And now we can use this rand. But we're going to get our word uh, kind of in one line here. Let's see if we can do it. I think we can do it. So what we're going to do is make a new string called word. And this is going to be the word that we pick out of that big giant list. We might change the name later, but word is fine for now. String word equals words dot get. And this is where you get an individual index of the list. So if you get the zero thing, that's the very first uh, word in our list. We don't want just the first one. We want some random uh, element in that big giant list. And in order to get that, we will say uh, rand dot next int. Whoops. Next int. And it takes as a parameter just the like the upper bound. And so what that means is basically if we put in 100, this is going to give us a random number between 0 and uh, this number minus 1. So in this case, 0 and 99. But we don't, we don't just have 99 numbers. We have a huge list of numbers. We don't even know how long it is, but we don't need to. We can just say um, words dot uh, size. So, so this is kind of a lot of little nested method calls. But what it does is say, hey, uh, I want to pick one word from our list of words. And the, the index of that word that I want, I want it to be a random number between zero and the length of my list of words, the size of that list. So if we had 100 words in our list, this would give us a random number between zero and 100 and would get us that word from that list. So for right now, let's just go ahead and print out this word to the console to make sure it's working right. Every time we uh, run it, it gives us some random word from our list. So let's just do a sys out and print out word and run it culminating. That's a great word. I like that word. Let's keep running it. Fitted, cookery, xylos, obsoleted, correctorship, under laborer. I am learning new words just by running this program. Where? I've definitely heard of that word. So I think there's a pretty sweet dictionary full of words. Hymnic. So the R code is definitely working to pick a random word in our big giant list. Awesome. So now the core of our one player game is ready. Now we just need to write all the hard part of the whole hangman game. So now our computer can come up with a random word that we, the, the player, need to guess. And now we need to create the whole hangman game around it. So if for some reason you've never played a hangman game before, um, typically you play it with one other person and they come up with some word or phrase in their head. And here we're just using words. They come up with some word and... Um, like I say, it's a six letter word. Instead of writing the word, they write six dashes. You just guess uh, whether a letter appears in that word, kind of like Wheel of Fortune. So if I say, hmm, S. Well, if there is an S, he writes everywhere that there is an S. He replaces that dash with an S. And if an S doesn't appear in that word or phrase, uh, you actually start drawing out a hanged man. Like you start drawing his head and then his arms and his body and his legs. And once the full hanged man is is drawn out, then you lose. So it's kind of super morbid. But hey, that's the way we play kids games, right? You just draw out dead guys. Anyway, so now in our program, we want to print out our word as hyphens, right? Because that's how hangman works. We don't just print out, hey, here's the word, guess it. No, we start out with hyphens and then have the player start to guess letters. So let's go ahead and see how we're going to uh, print out our word uh, with hyphens. So here's how I think it can work, right? So the, the core problem that we're trying to solve as programmers here is being able to print out the, the, the length of the word just in dashes. Um, but if the player has guessed one of those letters, uh, we shouldn't have a dash there anymore. We should just have the letter itself. So but what I think we can do is keep a list of the letters of the characters that the player has guessed, right? And then iterate through each uh, letter in our actual word. And if it's in the list that the player has guessed, we just show the letter. And if not, we show a dash. So I think that seems pretty simple and straightforward, right? Let's go ahead and create that list. We're going to have a list of um, character. We can't just do char because Java doesn't let us do collections of primitive types. So we have to do a list of character instead of a list of char. We're going to call it player guesses. Uh, sounds good enough. It's a list of guesses that the player has made equals new array list. Okay, so now we've got our list of characters. So now let's go ahead and write the piece of code that's going to look at the, the word that the player is supposed to be guessing and put dashes in there except uh, where the player has already guessed that letter. 
So let's just go ahead and do that with a for loop. So we're going to create a new for loop. For, um, we'll just start, of course, int i equals zero as every good for loop starts. And then i less than, we're going to do word dot length. We're going to go from the beginning to the end of, of the word. Of course, i plus plus as our iterator. So what we want to do is, if the player has guessed the letter, we want to print it. And if they haven't guessed the letter yet, we want to print a dash. So let's just have a simple if statement. We're going to check if player guesses dot contains um, word dot char at index i. So basically that is saying if the player has guessed the character at uh, the location I'm currently working at. So if that's the case, we want to do system dot out dot print not print line because printing a line uh, we'll, we'll do a new line and, and we'll end up writing individual letters on each, uh, on, you know, one per line. We don't want to do that. We want to just print with the letters one after another. So this is just printing a single character and not going down to the next line. So then we want to print the actual character. Otherwise, so else, we want to print a dash to show that they haven't guessed that character yet. So that's as simple as just printing a dash. And so now that should go through every letter in the word. If they've guessed it, it should print it. If they haven't, it prints a dash. And then at the end of this, we want to actually uh, we want to actually print out a new line just so that it goes to the next line. So now let's go ahead and test this code and see whether it just gives us uh, dashes. So this is <laughs> our word is interchased. And right now, since we haven't made any guesses, we show all dashes, and that is correct. So now let's work on the code to take the user input of letters and make guesses and actually add letters to that uh, player guesses array. But first, since we're going to need to do this a lot, we're going to need to print the current state of the game kind of a lot. Uh, let's go ahead and move this to a new method. And we, we can do that with Alt Shift M in Eclipse here. And we just have to pass in the word and the player guess. So we're going to need to print. We're going to, so let's call so let's call it like print word state, the current state of the word. I guess. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Now, all the logic is nicely contained in this method, and whenever we want to print to the current state of the, the word of the game, we can do that. So, of course, we at some point, we also want to get rid of this uh, cheating of printing out the real word. But for now, while we're programming the game, let's keep it in there to make sure our program is working nicely. Now we need to start the loop of getting the input from the user and um, adding to that list. So uh, to do that, let's just print out a quick, just a message to the user that says, please enter a letter. And then actually we're going to, we're going to need another scanner to do a keyboard input, because this one's only for file input. So let's just say a scanner, we'll call this one keyboard, equals new scanner, and we are going to need system.in. And we don't want to use this file. Okay, so now we've got a keyboard scanner. So now we want to uh, make a new string. Um, letter guess equals equals keyboard equals keyboard dot next line. So this gets the next uh, string input uh, from the user. So now we need to take what they guessed and add it to our list of characters, player guesses. Now you could have like a jerk user who types in like 18 characters in, in what you just asked them to enter here. What we could do is have like a loop if they enter more than one character, we say, oh no, come on, enter just one character, you jerk. But what we're just gonna do here is we're just gonna take the first character of whatever they put in. And it's their problem if they're being a jerk and trying to cheat. And so uh, to do that is easy. We're just going to take player guesses, our list of guesses that the player has made, and we're going to add um, a new character to that list. And the character we're going to add is letter guess uh, dot char at zero. That's going to get the uh, zeroth character that they put in, the very first character, whatever it is, and add it to the list. So now that that guess has been added to the list, let's go ahead and print uh, the game state again. So what it should do is wherever that letter appears now on the real word, it should replace that with the real letter. So let's uh, run that and see if it works. Uh, I'm excited to see. Okay, so now we have the word twall. I have no idea what that is, but it says, please enter a letter. That's right. Let's say we enter W and it's working awesome. That is so sweet. It's working, right? So it's replacing uh, the letter that we entered 
um, with the actual letter instead of just a dash. And it's only replacing that letter and not others. So now the core hangman-iness of the game is, is working great. So let's so now let's uh, loopify this so we can keep putting in guesses and uh, until we fill out the word, right? Well, it's first like we did uh, last time. Let's take um, all of this code and put it in a method of its own. And let's just call it like get player guess. It's going to take the word that the player has to guess and it's going to take the current list of player guesses. It needs all that information. So it's automatically created our method for us where it does all that, and we don't have to worry about it. So now let's just, just to test our program a little bit more, let's just do this all in a while true loop. So this is just gonna go on forever until we kill it. Um, and eventually we will, but it's just so we can, we know that we can add guesses and have it uh, fill out the word for us. Otoscopy. <laughs> so let's say we put in an O, right? It should put that O in the three places where there's an O. And it does, that is sweet. So now let's try um, the Y. And it fills that out too in a P. Awesome. This is pretty cool. S, C, and then last. Well, I guess well, let's try a, a letter that doesn't have anything to do with it, like um, R. Not in there anywhere. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't tell us it's wrong, but it's just not in there. So that's working. I could write Q. Nothing happens. I write a T, and we've got the whole word now. So that's pretty cool how that works, right? Pretty neat. So let's say what we want to do now is we want to exit the game once the player has um, correctly guessed all the letters, right? That's going to be one of the conditions where the game is over. They just guessed all the letters and the game is over. They, they clearly have the word because they guessed all the letters. So this is maybe a weird way to do it, but here's one way I think we can do it. So let's say we're, we're going, like we're in this print word state method where we're printing out, you know, the, the current state of the player's guesses in relation to the word. So what we can do is actually keep a, like an int correct count started at zero. And what we can do is every time uh, when we're going through the word that the, the, the player has already guessed that word, we can uh, increment correct count and say, so correct count plus plus, and then at the end of this method, we can return whether the player has already guessed all the, the characters. We can return that as a Boolean, and we'll know that the player has correctly guessed all the characters uh, if this correct count matches the word length. Of course, uh, first we have to change this from void to Boolean, because now we'll be returning a Boolean value instead of returning nothing. And what we'll be returning is the value of word.length equals correct count. Okay, so now this will be returning true if the player has already guessed all the letters in that word. And let's also move this print word state out of this get player guess uh, method because we don't need to always print it when we're getting the player guess. We instead want to do that kind of right afterwards. That way we can say if print word state. So this will return true if uh, basically if the player has won. And so if the player has won, then we want to break. So if this method has returned uh, true, that the player has guessed uh, all the letters, then it will break out of this while loop and uh, complete the game. We can print out a statement that just says, uh, so sys out, you win. And this will all, all change and evolve, but for now, that's what we're gonna do. Unsloping. <laughs> These are some words. All right, so U N. S, oh, it did fill out both ends, that's good. L, O, P, I, and G. So now it should end the game when I put this in. And it does. Awesome. So that is working. So now, but another thing we want uh, to allow the player to do is, so after they, they put in their guess and we, we print the current state of the game, uh, and of course, if they have already won, if they guessed everything, then we say you won. But if not, they get a chance to guess the word. And if they guess the word correctly, then the game is over too and they win. So what we're going to do is print out a, another statement, sys out, please enter your, your guess for the word. Okay. And then we're going to accept their guess for the word so with keyboard dot next line as usual. And we'll just say, so if keyboard.nextline dot equals the word, so if they guess the right word, we will break. So right now when the player guesses the correct word, it, it matches, 
then we will break out of here and it'll print you win. Um, but what we might want to do is move this you win down to inside these if statements. The reason for that is later on we might want to break out of this loop because the player lost. We haven't coded that yet, but um, for right now, if we left that in every time it broke out, even if the player lost, it would say you win and that doesn't make any sense. So now we have the opportunity to guess the word. So brassart, brassart, art made from brass. So let's type in S as our guess. Okay, so now it says, please enter your guess for the word. Now, if I put in something like stupid, um, it's not right. So actually let's print out a quick message that says that's not right. So just else, sys out, nope, try again, and then it'll, it'll keep going. So let's go ahead and run that again. A psychia, a I don't even care. I don't even want to try and pronounce it. So let's guess P. Okay, it's in there. Now please enter your guess for the word. Blah, 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 some garbage. And it says, nope, try again, enter a letter. So quickly, another thing I noticed that we're missing is we need to print the word state again each time in this loop. So let's just go ahead and move this uh, down, down to here. Uh, we'll, so each time in the loop, we'll print the current state, get their guess, and allow them to guess. All right, let's do that again. Coleman, Gary Coleman, um, M, please enter your guess for the word, garbage. And then it says, nope, try again, and prints out the state of the game again. So I think that is helpful. I like that. Enter your guess. Let's say it's uh, E. Okay, so now we have this. So let's say if I put in, so now what happens if I put in the right word? It should end the game, Coleman. And it does, you got it. Okay, so now we have all the winning conditions in the game. So now for the fun part, I think, the losing conditions. And this is where we're going to have all the fun of printing out the hanged man picture. Okay, so, so this is what I've come up with for um, what we're going to print out like in text for the hanged man guy, right? So what we're going to start with is essentially like a line of dashes and these two uh, pipes. And as the player guesses incorrectly, we'll fill out this little this O at the top and then the arm and then the other arm and then the body and then the leg and then the other leg. And once this is all printed out, uh, that means the player is lost. And what this equates to is one, two, three, four, five, six total bad guesses. Once the player enters six total bad guesses, then the game is over. Some of the fun of what we're going to have uh, coming up here is printing out um, this picture. So first, I guess for now, let's just put this at the beginning of our while loop. It could very well move, but I think it works fine here for right now. So let's just write our code here and then we'll move it out to, to another method. So let's just uh, first print out the, the top part, <laughs> the, the whole thing the guy hangs from. So what we're going to do is just sys out. And so let's see, this is actually what we're going to uh, print out. <laughs> uh, all right, so we'll print out this part here in quotes. And this part here, again, we'll need the space in the beginning to uh, account for the space uh, for the guy's arms later. Okay, so we're always going to print out that. We're only going to print out the rest of these as the player guesses wrong values. So uh, let's also put in a int um, wrong count so we can keep track of how many times the player has been wrong. And we're going to start it at zero. So... Um, if a uh, wrong count is um, greater than or equal to one, then we want to print out this next line here, right? Let's just paste that in there. And this is our next line. Bam, we print the guy's head. And then after that, if the wrong count is greater than or equal to two, then we also want to print the guy's left arm. But then notice that we also have to print uh, the other arm if it is three. So we don't really necessarily want to do a print line here because that'll always skip to the next line and the guy's arm will be all bleh, it'll all be in the wrong spot. So actually what we want to do is if it's greater than or equal to two, we'll just do a system.out.print uh, the left arm there or the right arm, however your perspective works there. So we'll print, uh, yeah, we need to actually escape it uh, so that we can get one slash there, because that's the escape character, so we need to put in two slashes to get one. 
and then we'll also put the space and then in still inside that if we have to say if the wrong count is greater than or equal to three then we do a print line of the other arm so we can put in that arm and finish uh, the line otherwise if it's not greater than or equal to three meaning it's exactly two we need to just do a print line just to finish off the just to do a, a next line okay so now we've accounted for two and three uh, four is a little easier because there's only one thing on that line so we'll just say after that if the wrong count is greater than or equal to four then we want to print out what is that like space and then a bar a pipe and then uh, five and six are going to be similar to two and three except we got legs instead of arms let's kind of break this up. let's add some spaces in here to keep this a little bit less confusing this is already pretty confusing but hopefully it's not too bad so if the wrong count is greater than or equal to five then we need to do uh, the left leg here with a space afterwards we're just printing that but then if it's greater than or equal to six we want to do uh, the other the other leg otherwise it's just five and we want to do a next line all right so now let's get of our get rid of our helpful little guy here okay so how we're going to increment this wrong count is i think after so when we're getting the player guess we can have this method also return a boolean um, that indicates whether this word um, contains the letter that the player guessed, right? So we can just say return uh, just word dot contains letter guess. So that's easy. So then out here, when we're getting the player guess, we can say if not get player guess so we're still getting the guess and doing everything there but if uh, it wasn't contained in the word then we can uh, do wrong count plus plus what we can't do is pass wrong count as a parameter into the method and make the method um, increment it that doesn't work um, because of how java handles uh, passing values into methods it just doesn't work so we have to do it a different way so now let's run our program and see if it prints our hanged man in chastity. Um, so let's just pick uh, letter X is not in there. Uh, so no, it didn't. Uh, that was an incorrect guess. And it's, you have to enter your guess for the word. This is wrong. Nope, try again, but it printed out our little head. That is pretty cool. All right, now um, let's enter another letter. Just to make sure this works. Um, T. So that worked, and I can type in a garbage word, um, but it wasn't an incorrect guess, so it still just prints uh, the head. Let's print out another letter, um, P. Please enter your guess for the word, blah, blah, blah. Nothing, but we have a left arm. So I'm gonna keep doing this until I fill out the whole guy just to make sure it works. So yeah, not until we put in six uh, wrong guesses and it's filled out the whole hanged man. So we should lose the game here. So. We have to still do that. First, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's move all of this complex stuff out to another uh, method. So we'll do Alt Shift M, and that's going to be print hanged man. And all it needs is the current wrong count. It just needs to know how wrong I currently am, and that's uh, all it needs to print out uh, the hanged man. So now we just have uh, this method call here where we just had where we used to have the very complicated uh, code but now it's abstracted away and we never have to worry about it again so we can print the hangman but then we can say if a uh, wrong count is uh, greater than or equal to uh, six then that means the player has lost the hangman is completely printed the player loses and we got to exit out of this game so we want to do a sys out you lose and then break okay so let's just test that out and make sure uh, it ends the game and we lose if we should lose yeah no la 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 no <laughs> no idea what that is either so let's just put in some garbage it'll fill out our hanged man almost dead and we lose perfect that is working so that's it we've got, we've got a complete 
one player hangman game, right? So the few outcomes of the game are you can win by guessing all the letters, that works. You can win by guessing the exact word, that works. And you can lose by putting in so many guesses that uh, you fill out the hangman. So all of that works. So that's pretty cool, right? You've created a full hangman game in just a little while. And you don't even need a friend. You can just use a whacked out computer program that knows hundreds of thousands of words and gives you completely strange words for you to mess with. Anyway, I promised that we would do a two player version as well. And guess what? That is super easy. So all we have to do, the only little modification we have to do is change the way that we get our word. That's it. We can have the player, uh, we can have one of the players type in a word um, instead of getting a random word from our, uh, our file like we are right now. So way up at the beginning of our program, we can just ask the user, do we want one or two players? So we can just do a sys out and we just say um, one or two players, question mark. And then we uh, use, well, we're gonna need this keyboard input up here actually. So let's move that. We're gonna need a keyboard input here. And we're just going to say a string um, players uh, equals keyboard dot next line and then just say if so if players um, dot equals one if they put in one as the string then we want to do everything we already did here to get uh the 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 word from the file and all this this crazy stuff here so, so let's go ahead and cut all this code and put it here in uh this if statement so now it's all in this if statement, right? But we need this word to be accessible outside of the if statement. So we need to declare this word um, up here uh, before the if statement. So then we just get rid of the declaration here as well. We only need it declared in one spot and can't declare it twice. So now currently our code is complaining because, hey, this uh, word may not have been initialized. And that's right. So if the player didn't choose one, we're going to assume they mean two. So if they type in garbage, the code will still work. So we'll just say else, we assume they mean two players. And then we say, how about like sys out player one, please enter your word. And then we just say word equals keyboard dot next line. So then after we get that word from the user, basically we, we would like to be able to clear the console output, all that output, so that the next player can't see what the first player has entered but I looked it up like crazy. There's no way to clear the console that works reliably everywhere. And I couldn't get it to work. I don't think there's a way to do it. It's, just, it's, it's not intended to work like that for you to be able to clear a console. So what I'm instead going to do is just put a whole bunch of lines uh, before the player starts. So the player can still cheat by scrolling way up. Don't let your stupid friend do that uh, and cheat because hey, that's not fun. So what we are going to do actually is just print out a whole bunch of new lines like this, slash n, slash n, slash n. We're gonna print out a whole bunch of them. And I mean a whole bunch of them. So a whole bunch of new lines, and then print out, the, I don't know, like, ready for player two. Good luck. Just something that indicates, hey, player two, it's your turn. Player one is done. They put in their word, and it is your turn. So let's go ahead and run this bad boy. One or two players, let's say we wanna do one player. Okay, so it has picked the word for us, metrized. It still prints it out. So in a second we can, we can take out this cheating, but uh, for now let's just make sure the one player game still works. M, okay, yes it worked. Metrized, you win, cool. All right, All right so now let's go ahead and see if the, the two player game is working. So let's play two players. Player one, please enter your word. Um, Halitosis. So now you can see it uh, put a whole bunch of lines here so that um, we could cheat by scrolling up if we want, but we shouldn't. You can put in, I don't know, millions of lines if you really want the player to have a tough time scrolling up to get to it, but we're not gonna worry about that too much. So let's just jump through this and make sure this works. Uh, I can put an S, that works great. I can guess the word, it's wrong. I can enter another letter like H, fills it in. I can enter my guess, halitosis, and I win. Awesome, that works also. There's only a couple of things left to do. First, take out the cheating. Right now it's printing out the word. Don't do that, comment it out. Later on, if you need to change, uh, fancy up your program and do some debugging and know the word, 
Just uncomment that line and you'll be golden. But for now, no more cheating. So first, let's go ahead and see what this is like without cheating. It's probably a lot harder. I'm going to play with one player. Please enter a letter. Boy, that is a big word. <laughs> wow. S. Okay, it's in there. I have no idea what my guess is for the word, so I'm going to skip that. Okay. Enter a letter. A. Blank A-S. Um, guess for the word. I still don't have one. How about a T? No, it's not in there. Enter a letter. This is the toughest word. One thing I'm thinking of as I play this, um, if the person loses, we should probably print out the word so they know what the heck it was. Because right now I'm going to be real mad that I don't know what this word is when, when this game finishes. Let's enter, so I still have no idea. Enter a letter I. I lose. I have no idea what that word was. Wow. I really need to have it print out that word when I lose. So when you lose, we want to print out the word was plus word. So now we'll actually know the mystery when we lose. Let's try it again. That was kind of fun. One player. Another enormous word. Wow, this game hates us. S. Subapprobation. I do not feel bad for not getting subapprobation, but it works and it is pretty awesome. But that's real tough. Now, what you can do as an enhancement or something is if you want to like limit the difficulty of the game, uh, you can have it so it'll only find like words that are like six or seven or, or ten characters or less or something and only give you those and not sub approbation. Or you can make it really difficult and say it'll only use words that are, you know, ten or higher. Or you can let the user choose a difficulty and go by the size of words based on that. But yeah, that was a good time. That game was a lot of fun to make. And now we have a really cool hangman game we could play either by ourselves or with a friend. So if you had a lot of fun too and you got some value out of this video, please let me know with a like. It means so much. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future where we make fun, cool programs in Java and do uh, other tutorials like that, please be sure to subscribe and you'll be able to see a lot more of this in the future. And again, if you guys want the full source for this program, go grab it in the link down below. And we'll see you guys in the next video.